Hello everyone, today we're going to be doing a resource allocation graph algorithm which is another deadlock, deadlock avoidance algorithm and um, it is different because it's like a sort of graph thingy that's going on and it's like when P when the arrow points towards a resource it means the this process is trying to request for this resource and when this box thingy is the resource okay and the circle thingy is the process so when the circular process is trying to the arrow is pointing towards a block a square block it means it's trying to request for this resource and when this this uh, the box thingy this uh, dot is allocated to this process the to this circle thing it means that this resource has been allocated to p2 so whenever a process has resources allocated to it okay it means that it has all the necessary means to complete that process that that means that process has all the raw materials all the resources required to complete so that time the what you called the process can be executed fully and it can release the resource that it's holding all right so yeah and now let's look at uh what you call let's look at our example all right so in this example right p p1 is i'm sorry if the view is too small or something okay so in this example yeah in this example p1 is requesting is requesting for this process this resource uh, let's name it R1. This is R2. This is R3. So in this thing, in this graph, P1 is requesting for R1 and it has been allocated R2. Alright, so P1 can't complete because it does not have all of its resources allocated. It's, it's allocated one thing and it's requesting for another. Uh, whereas P2, P2 has been allocated R2 and R1 but it's still requesting for some resource. So Whenever a graph, I mean a process requests for a resource, it means without that resource, the process cannot be fully executed, it cannot complete. Alright, so whenever, like, that means it's in incomplete, it cannot release whatever resources it has and finish execution, no. So, P P2 has, uh, it requires PR3 for its full completion. Now, P3 does not request for anything it just has some allocated edge it uh, it just it is allocated r3 resource but it does not request for anything so p3 essentially can be completed because whatever resources it has it has been allocated all of it it has just one resource and it has been allocated uh, that resource so p3 has all the necessary means to complete its execution so p3 is essentially gone re it's released all right so when it's when it's released this resource r3 will be empty so p2 which is requesting for r3 can now have its resource allocated to p2 because now that it's empty now this resource is empty right so now this resource can be allocated to p2 so now the the what you call let's erase this also so now r3 will point towards p2 so now P2 has all of its, that means the request edge will now be converted into an allocation edge. So now P2 has all of its, all of the resources required to complete. It has R1, it has R2, it has R3 and it does not, it's not requesting for any more resources, right? So now P3 has been done too, it's completed. So now it releases its edges, it releases its resources. These resources is now, are now free to be used for other processes for their completion. Right, so let's erase this. All right, so since it's really it's it releases all of its uh, resources. Now let's see that P one requests for R R one. Right, so now that R one has not is not allocated to any process, so now R one can be used for P one. So now this request edge will now be converted into an allocation edge. So this R1 will be allocated to P1. So P1 has all of the resources required for completion. It has R1, it has R2. R2 has another resource but it's not required by any process because all the other processes are gone. So P1 has all of the resources required. So now P1 has completed as well and the system is done and it's not in a deadlock state. Alright, so let's look at another example. This one. So 
look uh, p1 is allocated this r1 r2 r3 all right so now p1 is allocated r1 and it's requesting for r2 p3 is allocated r uh, p3 p3 is allocated r2 and requests for r3 p2 is allocated all of these edges there's uh, r1 two resources of r2 and one of r3 so it has all of its resources but it's not requesting for any resources so now this system this graph is not in a deadlock state again why because all of its resources can be satisfied and all of the processes can be completed let's see how look at p2 p2 is not requesting for any any resources it just has all of the resources allocated to it uh, like from before so then this p2 will be completed because it has all the raw materials required for completion so it releases all of its resources and is now complete so let's erase let's erase p2 all right now let's see that now that p3 p2 is gone p2 has been completed now there is one there is one resource there is there are two empty resources on r2 and since p1 is requesting for r2 now this request can be granted right so this request edge will be converted the into an allocation edge so this will be gone and now this arrow will be pointing towards p2 because now the request can be granted right because it's empty now these two units are empty so this can be allocated to p1 similarly for p3 now nothing like nothing is allocated like r3 is fully empty nothing is allocated to it because p3 p2 has been completed so now p3 request edge can be converted into an allocation edge so now p3 uh, so r3 is now allocated to p3 so now since p1 has all of the resources that it requires allocated to it p3 has all of the resources required allocated to it so p1 and p P3 has also completed, so now the system is not in a deadlock state. When will it be in a deadlock state? When none of the resources can be allocated to it and uh, the conditions can be satisfied. Let's look at some examples. Uh, Google images, yeah. Um, for example, this one. This one we just did right now, but the main difference is that, wait. Yeah, so the main difference is that, what you call it? Now P3 has is requesting for something, is requesting for R2. P1 is requesting blah, blah, blah. P2 is, has been allocated and it's requesting for R3. P3 has been allocated, but it's requesting for R2. So all of these requests, it, it, it depends upon one another. P, P, if P3, if this, if this arrow, this arrow was not there, if this P3 arrow for requesting R2 was not there, then this would not be in a deadlock state, which we did in the first example. But since P3 is requesting for something that's already been uh, allocated to these two, but these two cannot complete un unless these resources are released, which also depends upon P3, it forms a circular, it forms a cycle. That time deadlock exists. So deadlock exists in another condition is when the whole graph from the cycle. All right. So this is in a deadlock state because none of the processes like three, there, there are three processes. None of these processes can complete without the other. So one waits for the other's resources and each of the processes are dependent upon each other's resources. That's why this cannot be completed and, and hence the system is in a deadlock state. I hope you understood resource allocation and I hope that whenever a graph is given to you, you can understand it. Just try to find a process which has all of its requests, sorry, which has all of its resources uh, allocated to it and if uh, and it's not requesting for any other resources. So if, it's, if it has all of the resources required, like if it has all of the resources allocated to it, that means it can complete and it can release its resources and those released resources, those free resources can then be allocated to some other processes which are requesting for those resources all right so yeah that's about it for a resource allocation graph i hope you understood the tutorial and please subscribe and give a thumbs up to this uh, video and um, good luck